They're back! Um, <laughs> referring to the gaming computer company Razer, that is. Like I said, I have no severe phobia of. <laughs> nice clicky keyboard. Anyway, Razer is now taking <laughs> their attempt at making, at turning your smartphone into a laptop, and that is what they're calling Project Linda. She's not from The Conjuring, is she? Um, so, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, what exactly is Project Linda? It's basically Razer's own laptop dock. You put the... You put the Razer foam into the trackpad. It locks into the but yeah the bottom part of the um dock, and yeah it turns your Razer phone into a sort of Android laptop. This laptop or the laptop dock I should say has a 13.3 inch Quad HD touchscreen that, like the Razer phone, supports a 120 hertz refresh rates so it's going to support really smooth frame rates in games. It's got a built-in headphone jack, which the Razer phone itself does not have, a 720p webcam, and one USB-A port, and one USB-C port, which I kind of wish it was Thunderbolt 3, especially knowing Razer. Uh, I don't know. I guess we'll never see what it would be like if you plugged in a NVIDIA GeForce 1080 Ti into an Android smartphone, but whatever. And it's got a built-in battery. And in case you're wondering, it has Razer's Chroma keyboard, which is that multicolored um, keyboard LED backlight that everyone, including myself, likes. If I got my hands on such a keyboard, though, it would probably be red at all times. Because I'm insane. And the laptop dock itself has 200 gigabytes of what I'm assuming is solid-state flash storage. And interestingly, the laptop dock does not have built-in speakers. It uses the Razer phone's powerful speakers, which powerful, yes, but it would have been nice because it's a laptop dock. The much bigger size would have allowed for um, bigger speakers. So, yeah, and the phone can either be used as a traditional trackpad, which is interesting, or as a second screen, so kind of like a Wii U or... Um, I've uh, Razer's other prototypes that used a screen in place of a trackpad, and I am being told that the Project Linda prototype looks similar to the Razer Blade Sheaf laptop. Now, like the uh, like most of the other CES products I've been talking about, this is a prototype, so this is not coming to stores anytime in the future, but unlike something like the bendable LG OLED displays, I honestly could see this um, coming to stores, especially since you may know that smartphone manufacturers have been trying to bridge the gap between smartphones and computers slash laptops for years. I mean, think back to things like the Motorola Atrix with its laptop um, dock, the Asus Transformer Pad, which lets you take your Asus phone and turn it into a tablet. And the Samsung DeX, one of the more recent ones that basically turns your Samsung Galaxy S8 into a desktop computer. So, with all these attempts not really taking off, at least as far as I don't really know people that use um, devices like this, which is interesting... I've never seen such things in colleges or um, high school. Why is that the case? In my opinion, I could see this more... Like, if it was, like, a more well-known brand like a Samsung or an LG or an HTC or Apple, I could see this working in a more for kind of the more um, mass market, the typical computer buyer that's mainly buying a computer to do um to go on Netflix or YouTube or to type up that 60 page thesis um for school especially since um um 
you know, it kind of makes sense since we've seen these um kind we've seen keyboard docks for tablets, and now that tablets are kind of teetering on being irrelevant, it makes sense to bring them to smartphones. Well, that would be the case if these laptop docks were more affordable. Um, in the case of let's take the Motorola Atrix for instance, since it's kind of the closer cousin to this. In the case of the Atrix, the laptop dock itself was five hundred dollars. And if you bought the if you bought the bundle with the phone and the laptop dock, it was about three hundred dollars, at least according to CNET. So, not exactly the most affordable solution, and it kind of makes the Apple iPads smart keyboard look like a bargain at that price. So, yeah, that was kind of one of the reasons why it didn't work in the past. Um, and just the idea, um, I guess. At least for me, with things like the iPad and Microsoft Surface, it wor- it makes a lot of sense with tablets since it already has the bigger screen. And especially if you use like an iOS or especially Windows tablet, you're using more desktop-like word processing software, whether it be like Microsoft Word, Google Docs, or Apple's Notes software. Whereas in the case of a smartphone, obviously when you use the smartphone itself, it's too, it's too small. But I feel like a main reason this um, kind of concept hasn't worked in the past is mainly due to the price. Obviously, the screen and the laptop keyboard itself doesn't come cheap. But if it was somewhere in the market of around $200, I think it would make a lot more sense. In the case of Razer, even if they did release a laptop light dock like this... I'm not really sure how successful it would be, especially given that Razer tends to be more on the pricey side of pricing things. And so you're not going to get like the mainstream market since, you know, especially, you know, like college students are always looking to save every penny. And also for hardcore gamers, you know, more than likely hardcore gamers aren't really playing games on their smartphones especially. I mean, more than likely, they're already going to be carrying a beefy gaming laptop with them. So, yeah, and we haven't quite reached that point yet where smartphones are just as powerful as um, gaming laptops. When it comes to, like, consoles, I think it's pretty much getting there, especially since, I mean, nowadays, we live in, like, such a technological frenzy where... Where what would have taken five years to go from one console generation to another now takes roughly one year to make that. So, but those kind of processors, like I'm thinking like the NVIDIA Tegra X1, for instance, which was more powerful than a PS3, and it's supposedly the processor that's in the Nintendo Switch. Um, that's arguably not nowhere near as powerful as a gaming PC, and that chip hasn't made it into many um smartphones so so this kind of a laptop top uh, i think it would see more success if it was made by a company like apple or samsung or htc as for razor especially since they're a gaming central company i mean hell even the razor phone itself even though it's powerful i honestly can't even see too many hardcore gamers using it aside from you know it's the razor brand and it's super powerful but they're you're, they're not going to be doing most of their gaming on the phone they're going to be doing most of it on the razor computer and if possible if they own another console so yeah i mean kind of like the razor phone itself on paper it sounds really cool and i'm pretty sure in practice it also works really well but just knowing the kind of consumer razor is going after if this product was real I mean, if this product was actually coming to market, I don't think it would take off. But in theory, this could if it was made by a more mainstream manufacturer. So, all right, guys, this has been Blood Moon Bobby. I've actually been coming across more interesting products from CES lately, so you're probably going to get more video, more CES videos out of me, or at least a few more. So this has been Blood Moon Bobby, and thanks for watching. Hey guys, this has been a Blood Moon Bobby video. Please like this video or dislike it, and please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.